Hello and welcome to this uh, video tutorial. Um, today I thought I'd do something a bit different. Um, actually, I I'm just messing around with um, VirtualBox and I was just going to install um, a web server um, with CentOS and I thought, what the heck, I might as well just record it as well whilst I do it. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install CentOS 6.3 uh, on a virtual machine um, okay and this is um, in, this is actually using CentOS 6.3 at the moment the desktop version um, so I've downloaded and installed um, the VirtualBox manager okay and now we're going to go ahead and um, install CentOS 6.3 okay where can you get um, CentOS 6.3 first of all from um, the download so I've got the uh, ISO download and all you need to do is then uh, spell it correctly and then 6.3 download and then you should just come straight to the actual directory listing here I believe I went about it another way I went to the, the CentOS page which we can do that as well it's a bit slow at the moment here we go then I went to mirrors then I went to the CentOS public mirror then I just picked any one of these. I'm not really bothered. The HTTP one. Then I went to 6.3, just down here. And then I went to ISOs. Then I went to the i386 because I wanted 32 um, bit. And then you don't want this live CD, okay? Um, you want the 3 gigabyte one, which is the DVD one. If I'm missing it for some reason, where is it? crazy I don't want the live DVD that's weird because it was there it was there it's obviously not on this uh, mirror so let's try another mirror I used the Stanford one it was on the Stanford so let's have a look on this one let's go to 6.3 ISOs again I386 and there it is. Okay, so it's on the Stanford one. Okay, so download this 3.5 gigabyte one. Now this live this live DVD um, that's an already pre-installed version um, that literally just formats your drive and then pushes this um, one ISO to your um, hard drive, which is good. It's a lot faster, but it's not as flexible, uh, and therefore I, I prefer just spending a, a minute or two more doing um, this one than using the live CD because then you've got the whole lot okay it's a bigger download but anyway so I've downloaded this uh, ISO and I've got it o on my desktop this one didn't work anyway so let's close that down okay so once we've got VirtualBox open if this is the first time um, that you've ever used VirtualBox and um, VirtualBox manager okay then um, just click new and we're going to call call it um, let's just say web server Okay, we're going to change this to Linux and then to Red Hat, and I believe there's only they sent us there. Then we're going to go next. Now, for a web server, we don't particularly need um, that much memory, so we're just going to keep it at 512. We'll be fine. Okay, and then we're going to create a virtual hard drive now, and I'm going to change it to um, virtual hard disk instead, and I'm going to keep it dynamically allocated and then I'm just going to save it uh, on my desktop as well just for the sake of uh, doing this now okay and then save okay so that's in there now and we're going to give it yeah 8 gig gigabytes would be fine okay because it's only a web server create okay that's that bit done next thing we've got to do a little bit of configuration so let's click on the settings okay under here there's not a lot that you actually have to do Okay, you want to first of all give it a network. Um, everything else can leave it the way. If you want to up the amount of processes you give on it, then change that here. Um, I'll just leave it the way it is. Uh, display, we're, we're going to install a minimal um, server anyway, so we don't need any display, anything like that. Storage, we want to click on the, the CD, the disk, because we want to tell it um, actually what we're going to be using. Okay, and I've actually got the, the CentOS um, 6.3 ISO here okay so you just browse to find it um, otherwise you do choose choose this one here and stuff like that okay so we're just going to then choose that one and then we've got our our um, virtual hard disk anyway then on on our network we want to change the um, attached to 
to bridge adapter and then I've only got one um, Ethernet card uh, on this one computer so we're going to leave that one just as it is go to advance now someone might be able to tell me better but uh, on my one I, I can only seem to get it working on the Intel Pro 1000 MT server um, I'm not really much of a hardware person so I just kind of play around and test to see whether um, it works and that one works so just have a give it a go okay and there's your MAC address um, uh, which you can refresh here if you want to and then the cables connected okay so if you want to put another adapter on then um, go ahead serial ports and USBs and shared folders we won't do that um, we can do but we're not going to so let's click OK and then all we've got to do now is start so let's start and we shouldn't get any problems okay so it's then going to go through um, let's go view full screen mode yep switch okay so um, that's now on this bit and you've got install or upgrade an existing system so all you've got to do now is just basically click on the first one okay then that's going to uh, flip through a few things it doesn't particularly take long you know it, it goes through this little bit first of all and it's loading the anaconda uh, and stuff like that and mounting all the relevant things and doing all the the business that it needs to do I mean but you can pretty much install a minimal web server um, in around about I don't know 10 minutes so just on this screen we don't need to um, test the media before installation so just with your right um, arrow key just click that once to go over skip and then just press return okay then that's just going to do a little bit of um, finding the local media and uh, just goes a little bit further nothing much okay welcome to CentOS click OK now in this scenario because I've only given it um, 512 megabytes worth of RAM um, we're going to get kind of like the um, the kind of BIOS kind of look the retro look um, which is actually kind of a little bit easier in a way um, so we're just going to click OK on English and then I got a German uh, keyboard so I'm just going to put mine on DE and then just press tab to go on OK click OK there, okay there OK and then error whatever yeah device maybe yeah OK we'll just do reinitialize all OK time going to go down to Europe and and Berlin okay it's because I'm in Germany so there we go password chuck a password in here this is going to be your root password by the way okay um, so you're going to need this um, and it needs to be a good one if you're going to be using um, an actual production server it needs to be a really really strong password um, so just then um, hit OK OK, we've only got one drive on there at the moment, so we're just going to um, say um, use entire disk. That one's already selected. If it wasn't, then you could just press the space key and then click OK. OK, the partition options you have selected will now be um, written to the disk. Any data on uh, any, any data on deleted or reformatted partitions will be lost. OK, so right changes to disk. This is a virtual disk anyway, so I don't really care. OK, that's going to skip through a whole bunch of things. Now this is, like I said, the kind of the blue screen look. If you put um, 1,024 megabytes worth of RAM, you'll get then the nice GUI look. Um, but to be quite honest with you, it's just the same questions, just with a GUI. And then you can use your um, mouse and stuff like that. OK, so it's just checking all the dependencies and packages which need to be installed. Um, and it will by default uh, install the minimal um, server uh, one as well so okay it's now going to go through 209 um, packages and stuff um, yes yeah, so now we want to get out of this there like that okay so I'm just going to let it skip it's just going to sit here and load um, for the time being um, yeah that's about it really um, okay is there anything else I can tell you whilst we're doing this well if you don't know who I am by the way I, I'm David Thorne I'm from Thorne Web Design um, I've got a lot of other um, PHP 
um, tutorials and MySQL and so on. But really, this tutorial, I mean, I've been playing around with Linux um, for the past couple of months, and I've really been um, delving into um, the kind of the 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 more the web server Linux um, the kernel level stuff uh, because I'm not that interested in learning like all. I mean where all the things are on here I mean I've got like this m this minimal desktop with a couple of things installed um, because I, I want to learn uh, how to how to use Linux properly and uh, I mean I've got pretty good at it now actually but the the website web server side of it um, and also in like the DNS server um, and so on yeah it's really really relatively simple I have bought a couple of books and read the books and I just thought oh, I'll just do a video you know maybe someone out there I is also um, wanting to get started with um, learning how to use Linux and especially if you've got if you're learning PHP or uh, some form of server-side programming language and you want to have your own web server you know you can have your own web server but then well why don't you have like a virtual server because virtual server just gives you like endless amount of possibilities that you can do with it rather than just having like a, a a space hosted on another server you know you you've got to share you share databases you've got to share um, Apache installations when you get your own virtual server or a dedicated server then you've actually got you know you've got your own database you've got your own you've got your own service so you can basically do with it what you want um, so it's a lot more flexible um, and, you know and I pay like five euros or more in a month for the sake of my virtual server um, and, and I just think it's totally worth it. Yeah, to be honest with you, in the beginning, I didn't have really much idea of what I was doing. Um, but now, it's a good it's a good incentive to learn, you know. And especially having a live server, uh, it, it's always easier to learn. But I, I do really recommend using VirtualBox to install your servers on, um, to test uh, and so on, and see uh, how they go. And the great thing with Virtual um, boxes that you can then take the the snapshots, snapshots um, of how you're getting on. So if you install, say, um, you've installed it in the beginning, then you've updated it, and now you want to install the the Apache server. Well, take a snapshot of it, then install the Apache server, and then once it's installed, then you can configure it and see whether it works. If it doesn't, then you just jump back to the the um, snapshot that you were at before. And they can do it all again, and it's a good way of of testing all the time to see um, how things work. I mean, really, there's there's an endless amount of things which you can do um, with Linux, and I mean, it's just a case of uh, of case of reading um, the books. And I've actually found that there's more um, information about Linux than there is about Microsoft most of the time. Um, so it's far it's far easier. Um, to find out how to solve problems with Linux than it is with any Microsoft thing. I mean, okay, to be fair with Microsoft, yes, there are a huge amount of books and documentation, but there's more people on Linux that are, are sharing, you know, in in good good ways of uh, of explaining it and already pre pre written steps that you need to follow. So, you know, even come to the point of installing um, VirtualBox it can be a bit of a nose to, to install it but after you've you know you've googled a little bit and looked through a couple of forums you find out actually which um, repository you need and then which dependencies you need which um, I mean it, it's not rocket science to do um, but you know I, I managed to achieve it so um, I'm sure you could have managed to achieve it uh, but this is nearly done now. I mean, to be honest with you, once it is finished, it will just reboot, uh, and then you just got to log in. But you don't get any any graphical user interface um, with the minimal um, server installation um, because it doesn't come with any um, desktop environment uh, on it. It's basically just with the um, command line interface. Nothing more than that. Although for a web server, I don't think you need um, anything more than that particularly uh, because it's not a great deal of settings that you actually need to um, configure uh, I mean you need to configure your DNS which is really like maybe a few a few lines worth of um, few lines worth of text or commands and stuff 
your virtual host which is next to nothing as well and then you're back to the normal okay so it's now um, going to reboot so I'm just going to press enter and we get it rebooted I might just do the other video actually showing the graphical user interface one the the, um, the full desktop version or the one with a little bit more memory on it anyway um, okay so that's now um, booting up which is fine and dandy and yeah so then once you once you know that it's rebooting you get this then blue line that's crossing the screen and once you get the once it's basically all white then it'll then pop into um, the command line interface uh, ready for you to log in um, so that's where we we'll go to we'll go to the point um, of logging in at the beginning and then I'll stop the video so I hope you've got something out of this you know I mean to be honest with you it it's not it's not difficult but well there we go so now now we're in and we can just see whether we've got actually got um, anything on there no okay so let's just say if whoops I'm getting tired so just say if up to get uh, an IP address okay now let's just just ping the gateway okay the gateways there let's ping a bit of uh, Google shall we it's a bit unfair you know you know what I keep doing ping Google I'm gonna start doing ping YouTube I mean they're the same thing but um, let's just be fair let's f do ping Facebook as well there we go so th okay um, that's basically it okay quick um, tip if you want to shut down um, the server now you can use um, the shut down and just say now um, or um, reboot is another one as well I find using the init set, um, settings a little bit better so init 0 is then a complete shutdown init 6 is then um, a restart and then init 3 would be then to go into um, the, the command line interface so if you do init 3 would take you into this anyway because we're in init 3 now init 5 there's no desktop environment set anyway and then so in it zero okay and we'll shut it down just like that obviously the in it three we was in it already in it five is there is no in it five because that's not been installed uh, but it shuts down there we go and powered off um, that's basically it um, thank you very much for watching uh, my name is David Thorne um, if you want to come to my youtube channel it's then um, youtube.com forward slash Thorne web design um, the likelihood is you're on YouTube anyway to see me so come to my channel um, if you like this you know this wasn't really a tutorial it was just me showing a video um, just for the sake of making one because I wanted to make one so and I didn't want to do any coding or anything like that so I just made the video um, if you haven't learned anything and you've just listened to me for however many minutes this is then um, cheers alright you have a nice day hey bye bye then